Thanks. Good to see everybody. Just curious, uh, get a gauge. I don't know everybody here. Raise your hand if you work in carbon related industry. So good measure of it. Okay, nice. Um, and which of you are on like the supply side? Interesting. Cool. Thanks. This is it. Um, so yeah, my name is John Ellison. I'm doing stuff at Refi Podcast and really just trying to bring more people into this movement and accelerate this potential energy towards real world impact. And in my time at Toucan, I realized over and over again, there was just this recurrent theme that um, scaling digital measurement, reporting, and verification seems to be the single biggest point of leverage for unlocking actual impact for the planet. This is a provocation I'm going to hang the rest of the talk on. Um, I think we have a whole host of interesting new use cases and business models and economic primitives that can actually help us realize this regenerative economy. We're seeing people like Astro Protocol develop geo NFTs and having a whole spatial data registry that can enable anybody in the metaverse or doing NFT projects to access the data of what's actually happening on Earth through satellites, remote sensors, and inputs from the field. You look around and you see people like Gain Forests pioneering near real time credits and enabling people to create DAOs that assess the baseline of particular projects on the ground and begin to decentralize this bottleneck that the likes of Vera and Gold Standard are currently having in place. And so, um, I came onto this insight as I leaned into a role at Refi DAO. We are seeing ourselves as a founder-led startup community. There's so many people entering into this space, looking at what they can do as an entrepreneur to make the biggest difference. And my heart is to try and funnel that energy towards you know, what's actually making an impact on the ground and in our oceans. Um, blank slide here, not sure what was supposed to come next. But um, yeah, this is the kind of mission that we're catalyzing ourselves around. And our thesis for change is to really lean into the concept of network effects in Metcalfe's law. And we believe that if we can improve the depth of relationships between early stage founders and improve the quality of their interactions, we'll see an economic system emerge that really does express the true values of regeneration and helps to kind of, you know, temper the combative energy that comes around building for-profit systems. We've got a bunch of founder circles that are forming around Gitcoin Grant Round 15. Uh, one of those is the MRV circle. And we decided to, yeah, just kind of take a step back and look at the whole ecosystem. People have been building maps upon our directory. We've got one of the largest um, databases of people building at the intersection of impact and Web3. And we're seeing all these different opportunities to make a difference across, you know, liquidity as a public good, lobbying, venture investing, grant funding, looking at how to unlock identity. But time Time and time again, MRV seems to be the central bottleneck for all of this. So in kind of true prototyping fashion, we lent into bringing people together to have a single day to celebrate all of these different actors that are in this movement exploring this intersection. And we learned a lot about what's happening in the space and what actually this is. At a really specific level, this is about human behavior. And I think when you lean into this definition of measurement, reporting, and verification, it kind of starts to simplify some of the work that we're doing here. This is about determining whether a specific person in a given context actually did something that you need to incentivize them to do. And this you know, measurement, reporting, and verification fits within a greater process that has been defined over the last you know, few decades by these environmental asset markets um, and is rooted very tightly towards the development of methodologies, which is to say, what does the science actually articulate about what is planet positive and what can we assume these um, behaviors will result in in terms of carbon sequestration or biodiversity impact. But project financing usually comes before the actual um, yeah, the, the measurement, reporting, and verification process, which creates a major bottleneck. And I think what Senken and other actors are doing and trying to look towards the forward market is a major unlock in this space. Uh, this terminology was kind of coined at the COP conference in Bali at a similar time to the Bitcoin white paper. And so I think what we're seeing here is a kind of evolution of consciousness around what money is and what our role in society in tethering money to the real world. And so I think we're, we're seeing this kind of massive coordination game around money, but losing the focus on the, the true mechanisms that actually make this work. This is a you know, definition of the hypothesis around MRV, which if you're from a Web3 background, feels very much like the problem set we're trying to solve. And yet, 
the challenge is the people who are doing this just don't have the culture, they don't have the infrastructure, and they don't have the ability to scale this. And so it's really, I think, up to us in large parts to figure out how to do this from the bottom up. And we need an entire ecosystem of innovation to make this work. This is the current day methodology for verifying <laughs> projects using stuff like tape measures and advanced lasers, as you can see, and good old pen and paper. Um, all of the data in the very registry is currently manually entered. And as you can see, this stuff just doesn't scale. Um, but these people are, you know, trying to do good work and they have their hearts in the right place and we need to ally ourselves on them and provide them tools that are easy to use and let them know that this helps them do their job better and that they're a part of the same movement that we're in. It's kind of terrifying to see that we have over 510 million square kilometers on Earth and there's only 50 accredited verification bodies that are doing this work right now. We need a massive movement leaning into this in order to unlock this market. And like Gregory was talking about earlier, it really does come down to project origination and the confidence that we instill in buyers to say that, yes, your money definitely can produce this impact. And we have publicly verifiable evidence to suggest it. And as soon as we move those levers, we're going to see price action change. We're going to see the narrative change. Because right now, people are just lacking confidence that these financial instruments are actually having a difference. And as everybody knows, if we keep going on this course, we've got some pretty massive detrimental effects. And yes, while Web3 does provide these tools to decentralize this and scale it, we've also got a massive fucking culture problem. <laughs> People look at this space and they laugh because so much of our branding and presentation is around Ponzi schemes and get rich quick adventures and frankly I think we need to be really critical about the way that we use these tools and about the you know natural human desire to accumulate wealth and status so I'm not going to sort of you know try and shame anybody who got into the NFT game I personally bought a lazy lion as an experiment I used to walk around feeling like that was a cool thing to do and then I was like hang on a second actually this is totally not the right use of my money and I think we need to be really critical about our own motivations in this are we in it to make money or are we in it to make an impact because sometimes those things are actually at odds with each other. So we know that this is the bridge between what we actually need to do and how we can incentivize people to do it. We know we have a map through speed and scale of how to reach net zero by 2050 and how to reduce emissions by 50% by 2030. We have this action plan, but we need scalable MRV infrastructure to be able to both measure um, yeah, what people are doing on the ground and how our supply chain systems are working. So this is kind of a, a simplified view of why MRV in the middle of Web3 and real world behaviors on the ground is such a vital piece to unlock. We have you know, specific people planting trees, preventing them from being cut down, um, you know, starting local businesses, whatever it is, these are real people and real contexts. And the only way that we can verify this is by having other people on the ground taking photos and videos of this. And we can kind of sense check the data with higher fidelity through remote sensors, um, devices planted in the soil, satellites, um, and you know, make sense of that through AI and machine learning. And thankfully, folks like um, IPFS and Ocean Protocol and Ceramic are making this data available to then bring into NFTs and um, tokens and make that available through decentralized exchanges. Folks like Gold Standard are leaning into this. They see the power of smart contracts. They recognize the importance of uh, blockchain. But I don't know about you, I personally don't think we can trust centralized entities and um, corporate actors and nation states to hold this massive set of data because this is also you know, a potentially major risk for authoritarianism and manipulation and control. This stuff is incredibly powerful if you can determine what people are doing on the ground all over the world. And that is so you know, fundamental mental to bring in these Web3 ethos of decentralized governance, transparency, and publicly held accountability. This is um, a couple slides from the website and white paper from some of our friends at Game Forest. Uh, David Dow is here. I absolutely love what these folks are doing. Um, I feel like they have such a clear conscience on how to solve some of these problems. And it would be amazing to see the rest of the Solana ecosystem really lean into this and say, what can we build with the data that's coming from these satellites? What can we build with the inputs that are coming from people on the ground? And how can we begin to socialize this and make regeneration the cool thing to do? 
Um, I think it's interesting to see a conversation to say that yes, while these satellites and remote sensors are great, but actually you do still need people on the ground taking photos and videos to make high confidence decisions about what's happening. And so I think there's a kind of shift here which says yes, it's great to coordinate a global community online, but we also need local people in a given setting recognizing the role that they have near their home and helping us stabilize our climate, restore biodiversity, and take care of our communities. Uh, this is just a quick snapshot of, uh, yeah, I guess a little iteration above the usual tape measure, bringing in phones um, and using uh, samples to be able to validate data on the ground. We learned from Raviv at MRV Collective, which is a protocol building on Celo, that only 3% of carbon removal funding is going into MRV. And so if you're an investor in this space, lean into this conversation about what infrastructure can you deploy capital into to unlock this, because it is the major bottleneck. They've got uh, a fascinating play here that basically looks at how you can provide um, you know, a quick incentive to people who are providing data across nature-based solutions so that you don't need to wait for the environmental asset market to tokenize um, these into credits, but basically pay people for providing data of various types. I won't go much into the infrastructure here, but the interesting thing is that this can be applied for both positive and negative externalities, offsetting and insetting. And so as you start to look at MRV, this is not just about you know, offsets. This is not just about the tokenization of credits. This is about holding people accountable for what they say that they're going to do. I think insetting has a huge cultural potential if we can lean into encouraging people to look at their own supply chains and invest with the people who are actually providing them with the products and services that their companies need to survive. This whole idea of paying somebody else far away that you don't know to deal with your own pollution is fundamentally you know, rooted in this concept of separation. And actually, if we can lean into relationships and building you know, experiences with people that we're doing business with, I think we'll see more resilient business businesses and better products and services that customers can actually get behind. I'm super bullish about the work that Regen Network's doing for MRV. Um, these guys have definitely been pioneering the space for a long time. They are some of the only people working on open source methodologies, which is an incredibly hard nut to crack. As um, many of you know, Vera has these kind of closed working groups. They publish their methodologies on PDFs, but these are not living adaptive software systems that can take inputs from the field and say, actually, we need to update our assumption about how much carbon is being sequestered here. So I think it would be incredible to see people get behind Region Network, both on the Web3 and on the uh, legacy market, and embrace you know, open methodologies as a core building block to this system. Because methodologies really do inform what you need to measure for. And it's, it's hard science stuff. And as what we learned from um, Sam, like yes, we need more Web3 people, but we also need the you know, classical scientists in the climate science community to get on board with this. So you know, just going back into that kind of culture problem, um, interesting to see some of the experiments at D-Climate with like a carbon 2.0 version that completely bypasses registries as a whole and basically allows for Web3 native carbon credit issuance. I won't go deep into it, but just good to see that you know there's experiments happening on Cosmos, on Celo, on Polygon, exposing data via Chainlink, and these are building blocks that people can build new infrastructure, new tools with. Uh, I'm running out of time here, so I'll zoom through some of Holly at Astro Protocol's work, but the important thing to take here is that this location data is starting to be wrapped into zero-knowledge proofs to ensure the privacy and integrity of what these people are doing on the ground. And I cannot emphasize enough about the importance to recognize the, the vulnerability that this massive data infrastructure plays to so many people, especially those who are working to preserve endangered species, and bringing things into zero-knowledge proofs basically allows us to have confidence about these claims without exposing you know, the real location of these individuals. I had no idea, but apparently there's now a um, Google data set called Dynamic World that is um, an, across the entire planet with a 10 meter resolution of the entire Earth. <laughs> and this is open source, and this is available. So if you're looking at stuff to build with, this is an incredible material, but again, my preference would be for people to look at Web3 native versions. I don't trust Google as long as I can. Um, yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll leave that there. Uh, but people are really leaning into this. I think the kind of backdrop conclusion here is this is the major bottleneck. This is the way that nationally determined contributions are being measured. This is the way the voluntary carbon market is being assessed. And we need more people. 
We need storytellers to show that actually the regeneration on the ground is happening in marginalized communities all over the world. This capital is flowing to people that are really making a difference. Um, we need land stewards to recognize that we have tools that can make their lives easier and bring you know, more economic business models to yeah, whatever they're doing in the land. There's a huge imbalance between supply and demand. Uh, the science-based targets people who are committed to using evidence-based methodologies is increasing exponentially. We've got over a third of the entire global market cap committed to making science-based um, net zero targets. And I personally have, have hope for this. Um, I think that while climate change can be daunting and terrifying, I really like to look at this as a catalyst for evolution in terms of who we are as a species, in terms of um, the way that we organize ourselves the way that we structure our organizations and the way that we communicate value through money. Um, yes, our current system is flawed, but we have all of these incredible tools that we can use. So I would encourage each and every one of you to lean into making the biggest difference that you can make in the shortest amount of time and um, yeah, really push the boundaries of what's possible because while we don't have much time left, we've got some superpowers here and um, yeah, even Uncle Sam's getting involved. So love to have you. Thanks for your time. Um, check out. Check out the podcast, Season True is dropping soon, and if you want to refi orb, uh, I lost the last slide, but yeah, there's an online little refi orb generator that you can grab, so thanks, it's been fun. Um.